Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends during this Memorial Day week. Of course, Memorial Day being Monday, May 25th, but it's important to remember those who served our country every day. Yes, thank you very much once again. It's also the last week of May. Did you know during this week people will celebrate Water a Flower Day? Who's going to celebrate that? Really? <laughs> Does that mean you only water one flower? That's, that's a good question. Only one time. Well, I can handle that. How will the rest of your flowers? They'd be jealous. Right, and probably and, die. And, and, and according to some studies, plants, of course, can pick up on emotions. That's true. So the jealous flower would might try and sneak over and wrap their one of their stalks you around. Some of the water. You do a tap dance for the rest of your flowers. I think they'll be happy. Tap dance day? Is that what you're alluding to? It's also this week. Oh, wow. Sunscreen day. Every day is sunscreen day for me, Zach. Uh, actually, yeah, no, I actually single-handedly keep the sunscreen business in business because, yeah. well, as you can see, I burn pretty easy. You can see that. <laughs> Just as Jennifer said, May 25th is Memorial Day. We definitely want that to be kept mm -hmm. at the forefront of our minds, not flowers or sunscreen or tap dancing. Lots of flowers, however at the graves this week Absolutely. for Memorial Day. Just as soldiers have sacrificed so that you and I can have freedom in the United States, our Heavenly Father sent His Son Jesus to be sacrificed so that we can have freedom from sin. And that leads us to this week's verse. Zach? That's right. First Timothy 1, 9 and 10. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it is, has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Something, of course, that we preface our whole Christian faith on, right. Andy, that that grace um, that is so pivotal to understand, because regardless of what uh, we tr or how we try in this life to be better or good or to save ourselves, that without that act, that death on the cross, then we would not be free or even able be free from sin. And for those of us that have been Christians for a long time, it's easy to gloss over that and mm -hmm. say, oh yeah, I've, I'm forgiven, all that stuff. But boy, mm -hmm. when you think about it anew each day and God just washes over us with that grace, gives us so much freedom, we're so undeserving and yet he continues to do it. It's just such a blessing that we're thankful for. That's right. Well, coming up on today's Faith and Friends, a special anniversary for an area Christian radio station will help them celebrate also some important information about the upcoming GED orientation and it's time to talk food. And this week we're looking at healthy drinks that don't contain sugar. Water, our segment's about water. <laughs> We've done that one before. For eight minutes. <laughs> we have done water before. That's right, we did. <laughs> For eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but first, a special story on local high school senior Hannah Reinhardt. We welcome Matt Finkel to Faith and Friends who has more about this remarkable athlete. Thank you, Mark. Shawnee sprinter Hannah Reinhardt is closing out her career with the Indians this spring before heading up to Tiffin to run in college. But her high school sports journey has been anything but normal. The senior has had to overcome many challenges, all of them completely out of her control. This week's OIO Faith on the Field segment shines a light on Hannah's determination, attitude, and strength, which helped her persevere through many obstacles. In 2012, as a sophomore, Hannah suffered a soccer injury that left her momentarily paralyzed. The girl put her foot out and I flipped over her whole entire leg and just landed on my neck and back and everything. I, was just, I couldn't move and it's probably the scariest moment of my life. With no feeling on her left side, Hannah was rushed to the hospital. Within an hour, movement in her hand returned and 18 hours later, she was able to walk again. The doctors diagnosed Reinhardt with Kahari malformation, a condition present at birth in which brain tissue extends into the spinal canal. In June of 2013, Hannah underwent surgery. I was nervous. I've never had surgery, never broken a bone or anything. So I was like, I'm going to have brain surgery. That's a very big deal and very scary. Everything had gone great on the first surgery. And we thought, I mean, this was, this was a breeze. This was phenomenal. She was doing great. We went on a week's vacation with family. And while we are on the vacation, she developed a, a bump on the incision, and we come to find out that that was a cerebral fluid leak. Reinhardt required another surgery in July of that summer and a third in August. I just wanted to get better. I wanted to go out and do things. It was the summer. I wanted to have fun, go swimming. I couldn't even swim the whole summer, but it was just stressful. And then they were like, you need to go back into the hospital and have surgery again. And I'm thinking, goodness gracious, why is this happening to me? Hectic is, is beyond words. Uh, we found out that we had to become doctors. 
uh, and do IVs and things for antibiotics and change them every eight hours. Despite facing three brain surgeries in three months, Hannah's faith and support from her family, friends, and church helped her persevere through a difficult time. Reinhardt is slight edge right now. Before my surgery, my church prayed over me and that kind of helped me a lot. Like I had, I noticed how many people cared about me. There's a lot of times I honestly wanted to give up. I, I always told my dad and my parents, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Why is God doing this to me? But I realized I'm getting a second chance at this. So I have to stick through it and I have to be strong through it. And so God helped push me through. It was just a community of faith time of prayer and it was a blessing and it, you know it shows how connected church is not just local but the kingdom of God approach and that gave us a lot of strength. When September and soccer season rolled around and she was medically cleared to play there was no way Hannah was going to be on the sidelines. I was determined to go back play soccer. I told my parents I was like I'm gonna play nothing's gonna stop me I'm definitely gonna play and then when I played I was like wow this is it's different because I could feel more pain, but I was just so happy to be on the field. Hannah played soccer and ran track during her junior year. And this year, she's focused solely on track, running in the 4x100, the 4x200, the 100, and the 200 for Shawnee. Next year, she will continue her running career at Tiffin University. But before that, Hannah wants to soak in her final high school moments. It's getting close to the end, and I don't want it to end, because I know it's going to be harder next year. but. I'm thinking I'm blessed for this. I'm glad that I've got to spend time with the people I've been with. Excelling on the athletic fields after all that she has been through has given Hannah the strength to overcome any obstacle that comes her way. Well, for many like Hannah, graduation parties are in full swing and that means many families are thinking about food and drink options. In today's food segment, we're thinking beverage options as well with a traditional summertime treat that cuts out refined sugars. Zach? Well, thank you, Matt. Did you know that the average American consumes 100 pounds of sugar a year? That's roughly 30 teaspoons a day. That's according to facethefactsusa.org, which also states that nearly half of that sugar comes through beverages. Well, with graduation season upon us and summer activities not far away, we're getting into the time of the year where drinking liquids is important to avoid dehydration. But how can we avoid so much sugar at the same time? Today in our Lost Creek Care Center food segment, we're going to look at a well-known summertime favorite, lemonade, and attempt a recipe that uses no refined sugars or artificial sweeteners, wow. guys. I don't think we can do it, Zach. It's a straw <laughs> strawberry I lemonade. I believe you. I'm excited. <laughs> I do have a quick quiz for you first. Jennifer, if you know the answer to these, you're not allowed to answer, but we'll see. <gasps> Only if you don't know the Of course, answer. <laughs> we mentioned the um, 100 pounds of sugar. I'm not doing right. enough, I guess. 30 teaspoons? That's 30 a teaspoons lot of a teaspoons day. to the mouth. But do you know what the top five uh, foods or drinks are as far as contributing to your calorie intake? Mountain Dew. Well, I would broader, guess probably. Broader. Oh. You mean drinks in Soda general? Soda is number one, yes. Soda or sweet beverages. Lemonade. Sweet. The oh, Tropicana sweet beverage, might yes. work. What else do we have besides soda and sweet beverages? No ideas. We're talking drinks, right? Or food. Oh, food. Calorie intake, that's what you said? Yes. Cheesecake. Well, grain-based desserts. So I guess you could count that as the, the bread. crust and the, the crust cheesecake. The I don't like That's the crust of the cheesecake, so I'm good there. It's actually number two. All right, was yeast, number one pop. Yeast breads. Number yes. one was soda. Okay. Yeast breads. Yeast breads is number three as far as breads highest have sugar. calories. That yeast gets mm -hmm. converted into sugar. Oh. Chicken dishes comes in at number four. Mm -hmm. Your fried you chicken. Yeah. Oh, fried. Yep. Okay. And then number five, my personal favorite. Pizza. Pizza. I knew it. Pizza is the number Where's five. Where's deep dish pizza on that list? Oh, I don't mind a deep dish every once in a while. But that's a lot of That's true. I so the calories are there and we need to be mindful, but today we're making strawberry lemonade sugar free, refined sugar free, I should say. So what we have here, oh, let's take a look at hey, the recipe first. Hey, Again, Andy has stir? the knife. No. <laughs> Our recipe <laughs> looks like this. You're going to need eight to 10 strawberries and these are gonna be whole, two lemons peeled, three and a half cups of water. Wait a second, we're peeling the lemons? Yes, you are. Who does that? And then a quarter <laughs> cup of honey or less. The honey is gonna vary depending on how sweet you would like your lemonade. What is a hole? Well, you can see Jennifer's doing it right here. Well, just take the tops off. I'm kind of cutting it off, She's but you could it. scoop it out. Yep. So what we want to do, well, we've already started. You can see the water is boiling. That's going to, oh, you're going to boil one cup of water and then we're going to dissolve the honey into it. So, so just pour Andy, it in. if you can, you're going to kind of pour it in and, and move it around with your spoon. Push this top off and it'll just scoop. 
Yeah, well, Andy's doing that. Jennifer yeah. is hauling the uh, strawberries the and the is peeling the lemons. Keep hauling. Keep hauling. <laughs> Keep hauling. Is that H A U L or H U L L? It is H U L. Our good friend Perry Hall. I just talked to uh, the other day from down in Fort Recovery. <laughs> Does he like strawberry lemonade? I would imagine Perry is a big strawberry <laughs> lemonade fan. In our brand new blender here on the Faith and Friends set, we are. Wow, going. our budget is going up. <laughs> Look at it. It's it's TV 44 colors. We're going to puree the strawberries we have colors? and the lemons. <laughs> And red and blue and white, our logo. How do I know when this is dissolved? Well, it's looking pretty good. Just try to get all that honey in there and kind of keep it moving around. We're going to add that momentarily. Okay. Oh, put, put these wonderful. in here. The lemons and the strawberries are going in. Again, this is two lemons and anywhere eight to ten strawberries. I think I have a seed in there. Oh, I'm sure it'll get blended Ah, Ooh. fingers in the honey. Now, we boiled one cup of water. That leaves two and a half cups of water left over. This is going to go into the blender as well, and then it's going to get... Uh, blended with the strawberries and the lemons. All right, Jennifer, a little faster here. Good honey. That's local honey, isn't it, Jennifer? It is from Wapakoneta. I think it's Stanky, Stanky's Bee World from Wapakoneta. That's, That's right. right. You one know, it zero helps five eight one to get Road. honey. We should have talked to a Don Arhite. You know, she with Busy Bee Realty, who yep. uh, sponsors things here in our station. She is a queen of honey. Okay, the rest of the water needs to go in. Okay. It's gonna be two and a half cups. What about our boiling water, Zach? We are going to add that after we blend these together. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Yes, put the <laughs> lid on. And let's see here. That's a lot of water, isn't it? Well, I'm used to smoothies. Okay. I'm, I'm used to, yeah. Is that on there so that's securely? The that is on there water. securely. So here we go. We're going to blend this. Let's, let's, let's give it a high powered blender. <laughs> there. Seems a little bit low. There we go. Ah, ah now it's blending. <laughs> The table is shaking. <laughs> and let's see, we're going to blend this until it's smooth. What do you think, Jennifer? Looks good already. Mm, it smells good. It's uh, smoothish. Okay. Is that the smooth test? You stick your nose in it? <laughs> we're going to go with it. Of course, <laughs> if you want it to be more smooth, there is a little bit of pulp in here, but nothing that would hurt anybody. No, you've got quite the. Concoction deal going on here. So now what okay. we're going to do is slowly add the honey. You can do that. I don't want to burn myself. I think we forgot. We forgot something. Oven mitts. We forgot oven mitts. <laughs> At home. <laughs> no. Is it hot? Hey, it's not. That's not hot. Okay. okay good. good. Oh my goodness. Good. That almost ruined the entire <laughs> segment. I'm scared for a moment. Add this in. Very wow. Nice. And finally. Well You've Finally. done this before. Yeah, it's We're going being to a mom, blend you know? it once we have to more. Eat and drink. Jennifer, if you'd like to do the honors. So it's going to be a hot this lemonade. Button right here. Mm -hmm. Oh! And voila, there it is. <laughs> what we're gonna do is you're gonna actually serve it over ice and that'll Oh, that'll cool it down. That'll cool it down just I like a little bit. The sound bit. of it. And what, what we have here crackles? are two glasses for you with ice in them. I don't okay. take the lid off. Nope. Take the lid off here. I'm very excited about this. It smells very good. It's frothy. Wow. It's I gotta let it cool. <laughs> oh. We failed. We only have two glasses. That's okay. You can drink out of that, though. <laughs> I'll take the blender. And this is going to be oh, I smell refined, the honey. sugar free. The sweetening is just from the strawberries and the honey. I still got a little warm part. That's not. Good. You might want to let it cool down. You probably. Just a little bit. You might have wanted to blend it just a little bit more. It's not quite completely smooth. Mm -hmm. But um, it's definitely. You know, there's no refined sugar in it, and that's what's important. You don't like honey it. lemonade. No, it, it's just. Why don't you like it? It's different. The honey's different. It's not no. bad. It's not you bad. Probably, different. You probably don't need the honey, right? Mixed reviews. So let us know what you <laughs> think as you try this. If it's cold, mm. I like it. As they, I hit a cold part. Now it's getting better. That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> it it's needs like we're to be drinking cold. strawberry tea. We should put it in the refrigerator for a while. Meanwhile, we're going to pass it back over to Mark, who has some very important information about next week's. Able GED orientation. Mark? I like it. Well, thank you, Zach. And we are joined now by Joyce Tracy from the Apollo Career Center. And uh, an exciting time of the year for you guys as school year is kind of winding down, but there's a very important summer session that uh, is coming up. That's right. We can hardly believe that we're already through, almost through with this year. 
We have one more orientation that is coming, and it's the first week of June. So that'll be the end, and then we'll shut down for July and restart in August. So we still will we'll be back. And of course, we're talking about the, the GED program among those. Is there a typical GED student anymore? Um, there is, you know, that finally, usually around 26, they see that life is dictating that they need to, to get that high school diploma. So yes, you know, around 26, but no, we serve everyone from, you know, 18 to we've had 80 year olds. So it's never too late. And certainly the continuing adult education, a major part of the program as well. That's right. You know, we prepare students for post-secondary. So we have an array of classes in the adult ed program, manufacturing, uh, anything medical. And these are in-demand jobs. So our students need to be prepared because if you've heard, there's jobs coming. And, um, but they need to be prepared to be that good um, employee. So they need to get some background, some education as well. Have there been some students that have come along that have maybe blown your mind a little bit going, wow, I, I can't believe he or she at this advanced age is coming back and finishing up their education? Mm -hmm. We always have students that sur surprise us. Right now, one of our students has came through as a GED, ended up going through our welding program, and he is now teaching welding. Hmm. So who knew, you know, that he could have such a big future? And in fact, you know, he also has reached out and is doing some government jobs. So he's just not right here in Lima. He has truly, you know, taken his uh, newfound certificate and has really grown with it. Speaking of Lima, we know summer is a season of construction and certainly the last year has been a lot of construction at Apollo, but the, the lights at the end of the tunnel down there? Mm -hmm. We are getting close. <laughs> I, I almost think we're more than halfway there. Um, it has been you know, topsy-turvy, and if you come out, you know, it is definitely construction at its finest, but we're still in business. The high school students are finishing up this week, and of course the adult ed program will still be going strong through, through the summer as well. It hasn't stopped us. How much more time do folks have to sign up for orientation begins? We just ask that our students drop in to orientation. They don't even have to call or sign up. But if they would like to go to the websites that are going to be shown, uh, the ApolloCareerCenter.com or um, also Vantage. Uh, right now, we are serving over five counties. So we're in Allen, Auglaise, Mercer, Paulding, and Van Wert counties. So there's five of them, and we're out there. So if you go to the websites, it's the best place to find the information, or you can always call um, Apollo as well, and we can help kind of guide you in the right direction. <laughs> and also another part of the, the program is the English second language aspect yes. as well. Our ESOL program is just a wonderful class where we bring um, students in with a lot of different backgrounds that need help uh, working with their English and uh, reading, writing, listening, all of those things. We're going to have a big picnic on the 27th just as our culminating activity. But just so everyone knows that, that that program is there, it's a wonderful program, and the students really find a lot of success as well. You kind of touched on it earlier, but it seems like every week or every few weeks we hear about more new jobs coming to the Allen County area. How are you guys helping folks connect with those jobs? Well, what we do, of course, is work with students with basic skills. So anything, any job application, many of them have, or certificate program, they have to do some testing to be able to get into some of those programs. We can help with that. We can also prepare our students for the GED, um, push them on to post-secondary. What do they want to do with the rest of their lives? We can help them with that. We call that our transition program. We can set them down and help them figure it out. So we do a lot. We wear a lot of hats just within the APL program. All right, thank you very much, Joyce Tracy from Apollo Career Center. Of course, for more information, you can head it to their website. Well, three years ago, it was a startup dream. Two weeks ago, the Christian radio station Shine FM moved into their fourth year of ministry in the Logan and Hardin County regions. Jennifer joined them for their special celebration as they thank the Lord for an opportunity to be a beacon of Christ's light through the radio airwaves. Like many ministries, Shine FM started as a passion, a drive, something spurring inside Mark Boyer to take his big city radio knowledge from Columbus and use it to impact Bell Fountain, Kenton, Marysville, Urbana, and all surrounding communities with the message of Jesus Christ. That was three years ago. 
somebody asked me, it's like, what did you envision where the station would be at three years? And it's like, I really, I really didn't. It was just one of those things that let's get it on and see what God does with it. And God's done great things uh, with us. Just being involved in the community, working with the churches, working with different organizations, being a voice for those organizations that are faith-based. And this is now a sold-out, bursting beyond capacity anniversary dinner to celebrate three years of ministry for Shine FM. Since its beginning, Shine FM has grown, adding local personalities like Angie in the morning, Tracy in the afternoon, and Kathy on Saturdays, a stronger presence at events in the community, and an emphasis on stronger marriages, partnering with Vows to Keep. All in all, everything with one major focus. I just see the, pow the power in radio because it's a powerful tool to get the message out. Just like you guys experienced at the TV station, it's a powerful tool. And what do we have? We have the best messages of all. And whatever, if we can take these radio stations and use them for God to get that message out, to reach those that are far from Him, but also to encourage those that are in Christ, to be in His Word, to be in prayer. Yeah, we want to see the, the body of Christ just come together and do great things. That body of Christ did come together for this third anniversary, which included a concert with national recording artist Danny Goki. Goki recently released the album Hope in Front of Me, which so far has two radio hits, the song by the same name, as well as More Than You Think I Am. Goki also operates a nonprofit called Sophia's Heart. So an opportunity to impact a station like Shine FM for Goki has definite meaning. It's the fact that they support our music, but in, in return, we have to come back and support them and show our appreciation by doing this event. But I love it. I love that they have, have, they're surviving. They're thriving. I just found out that Christian, out of all the genres of music, Christian music is growing the fastest. And so for them to get in there and, and take the message that people need to hear, the message of hope, and that they're not just doing it on a, on a low level. They're, they're, they have a vision, and they're getting out there, and they're surviving and they're thriving in this economy. It's awesome. Listen to Shine FM at 88.5 or 88.9, or visit them online at shinefmohio.com. Definitely was a great event, but also really inspiring meeting Danny Gogi. I have to admit my respect level for him really, really increased um, just by talking with him. You know, a lot of people don't know that he became a widower at the age of 28 when his wife died during a routine heart surgery. Since then, he started a ministry named after her. It's called Sophia's Heart. And we'll hear more from Danny Gokey about that ministry in the weeks to come. Well, surgeries, health, death, just three of the topics that sadly we hear regularly as we take your prayer request. Some of this past week's prayer requests are asking for wisdom when making decisions about doctors, blessings and direction for a small business owner, family members and friends struggling with marriage issues, and also we have a praise. One viewer wrote in this week thanking TV44 for providing programs that assist in growing of her faith. Of course, that is our desire here at TV44. And Andy, would you take a moment and just pray for these requests? I certainly would. Father, we come to you. Uh, just humbled by who you are and how you use a station like TV44 to touch lives, how you are able to put out good words of encouragement and teaching, uh, how your Bible is all over this station 24 hours a day. We're just so thankful that you're able to use us in those ways. And we pray for all these different requests, different hurts, uh, different heart issues, that you would heal them. Uh, you are big enough. You are a God that listens to our prayers, and we certainly bring these petitions to you. Uh, draw us closer to you through the hard times and help us to celebrate in the good times as well. In Jesus' name, amen. A reminder, you can always contact us with more prayer requests. Our prayer line's open at 419-339-3000 and possibly the best way to contact us 24-7 is through email, pray at WTL, prayer at WTLW.com. That's right here at TV44. One of our answers to prayer is your faithful giving. We ask that you keep TV44 in your prayers as we enter these summer months. You know, statistically, donations are reduced during the summer when many people are away from their TV and enjoying, of course, outdoor activities. But since we still have the same financial responsibilities during the summer right here at TV44, we appreciate you remembering us in prayer. And if you've been thinking about donating to TV44 but have not had the chance, now's a great time. Gifts of any size are used to spread the message of Jesus Christ throughout the region. You can donate securely online at WTLW.com by phone, mail, walk-in, or find out more about our automatic monthly giving 
by calling or emailing us at contact at WTLW.com. Thank you for your financial partnership, joining together to reach the region for Christ. Now one final look at our scripture, Andy. All right, 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. What a great promise that is, destroying death and bringing light to life. We certainly hope that you've seen a little bit of that life here today on Faith and Friends, and we wish you a great week as you go on about your activities in Him.